This is the Gen Y Leaders Podcast. Welcome to the Gen Y Leaders Podcast, where we guide millennials to become the next generation of business leaders and entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Eric Huey, and multiple times a month, we bring you interviews from high-performing millennials who are challenging perceptions and changing expectations of our generation. Our mission is to help you overcome fear, take action, and go confidently in the direction of your dreams. It's time to start preparing now, mainly because 10,000 baby boomers are retiring every day which will create a vacuum of career opportunities that you've been waiting for. Will you be ready? Emerson, welcome to the Gen Y Leaders podcast. Thanks for having me, Eric. I'm excited to be here. Emerson, if you could just uh, start by giving a high-level overview of who you are and what you do. Yeah. Uh, so my name is Emerson Hodes. I'm a sales and marketing manager at uh, Chief of Staff KC. Uh, we're a local, um, local-based recruiting firm here in uh, the Brookside area. Uh, we focus on um, really trying to help small to medium-sized businesses in the KC area with their talent needs. Um, but we're we're a candidate we're a candidate based um, company first and foremost. Um, so we really do prioritize our candidate relationships. So on the recruiting side of things, uh, when we're working with candidates, uh, we'll bring them into the office to meet with them for about an hour, yeah. uh, really get to know, you know, not only their background and their uh, job experience, but also, you know, really what drives them, what their passion is, uh, you know, what their preferences are for jobs so we can, you know, accurately line them up with good opportunities rather than, uh, you know, that transactional recruiting where um, you have a job, you find a, find a candidate for it, and if they don't work, you don't really talk to them again. And, um, so we really do um, try to make a difference here in the Kansas City community, work with as many local uh, companies as possible. Uh, we got about a, a nine person team right now looking to grow uh, here this year. Um, obviously, the, the virus has kind of thrown a wrench in some growth plans for everyone, obviously. But, uh, yeah. you know, we're, uh, we're just doing our best to make an impact in the community where we can right now. And then hopefully as, uh, you know, we come out of this, um, you know, business will, business will hopefully be good uh, across the board. So. Yeah. Yeah. Prayers and hopes for that for sure. But I uh, love the, your, your, your business model being candidate focused rather than that transactional focus. Cause I think so many uh, staffing firms get a bad rap of just trying to, you know, turn and burn, so to speak, candidates through businesses and, you know, not really care if it's a good match or not. Just, they just want the contract and, and the commissions. Uh, so yeah. kudos to you guys for taking a different approach. I know it'll pay sure. off in the long term. Yeah. So, I mean, why recruiting? What, what got you, you know, what, what got you into that to begin with? Yeah. Um, so I kind of fell into recruiting and if you ask a lot of recruiters, um, you know, that, that seems to be kind of a, like a similar, uh, a theme for everyone. (laughs) Um, obviously there, you know, there are people out there that, uh, really enjoy it and, you know, may have a family member or so that, uh, kind of point them in the right direction. But, um, I actually was working out in Las Vegas in a sales job, travel sales job out there. Um, ended up leaving that and I was trying to get into the music industry, believe it or not. Um, I've always had a passion for music, uh, just appreciating it. Um, and then, you know, putting together events and, and, and doing stuff like that. And so, um, was working at a music festival in Nashville, trying to get a job at like CAA, some of the bigger, um, you know, companies in town. And, uh, just after a couple of weeks, just really wasn't, uh, wasn't biting. Um, so I, uh, I was house sitting for, a guy who was working in a, a building where there was a recruiting firm there. And he suggested I applied, said there's a lot of young people there, looked like they all dress pretty nice, have a, have a good, um, you know, uh, a company. So I uh, kind of applied for that, fell into it, got a job there and uh, haven't looked back ever since. Um, you know, I, I really enjoy uh, what I do. Uh, it allows me to meet a lot of really cool new people every week. Yeah. Um, I, I sit down with probably 10 to 15 new people every week, um, just getting to know them, talking about their background. And then on the client side, I get to understand, you know, a ton about different businesses, um, wh- whether it was in Nashville or now in Kansas City. Um, you know, when you're going to work with a client, you have to understand their entire operation, you know, how um, this position that they have open is going to impact, you know, 
every other position at the firm. Um, and um, yeah, it's just really cool to, to learn about, especially in Kansas City, uh, such a tight knit community. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, getting to know as many companies as possible, as many different business leaders as possible, and uh, you know, helping them out, out with their problems is just is just awesome. So, and uh, yes, speaking to that, you know, speaking to the value of networking, you had started a group called the Loop here in Kansas City. Uh, you maybe you want to touch on that just briefly and kind of give an yeah. idea of that, it what that is yeah. and kind of the value of networking. Of course. Um, so when I moved back to Kansas City, um, I had been gone. I went to school in Nashville as well. So I had been gone for about seven years. Um, so when I first moved back here, a couple of the initial people I got introduced to um, who are now long term mentors for me um, really did preach the value of networking to me, um, especially at a young age and not only in the industry I'm in, but at a young age. Um, and so what I, what I started to do is just uh, network with as many business leaders as possible, uh, really just focusing on trying to, to learn about the Kansas City market first and foremost. Um, started with uh, a couple family friends, you know, friend, dads uh, or moms of friends that I've grown up with and kind of snowballed from there. After doing that for about six months, um, I just kind of noticed that there weren't a ton of young people that were, um, I guess, using networking as, as well as they should uh, to benefit their career. Um, you know, I was a sponge just soaking up information left and right, just yeah. learning so much from the successes and failures of uh, different leaders um, and throughout their career. And so I, I wanted to start a group that, um, you know, would allow younger people to kind of to realize that and to get practice networking uh, with peers um, in a social situation when there's not a lot of not a lot of pressure um, as there are at certain networking events and um, you know uh, so really the goal is just to build friendships first and foremost at a young age um, so the the loop KC were all uh, born in the 90s or 90s babies um, and so um, yeah everyone's in their 20s we have about 90 members now um, and we have professional development events where we have speakers come talk to us or entrepreneurs where we go to their uh, business and kind of check that out and then we just have happy hours so it's uh it's grow it's going really well it's growing really quickly as well um yeah. and i have a, a lot of people to thank for that i have a great team behind me so yeah that's awesome great. congrats on that growth and getting that together appreciate it so going back to our initial conversation we met up you were explaining your business model uh chief, at chief of staff and how your model as you mentioned earlier kind of differs from other recruiting firms and the fact that you're you're candidate focused and i think the analogy that you used uh, when you were explaining it to me was the movie hitch and how yeah. you were like hitch isn't going to just like grab some guy and like go you know pitch her quote unquote to a girl and like go on yeah. first date he's going to spend time with the guy and make sure like he's a good match for any woman he would he would pair him up with um and i thought that was a really great analogy so if you could for listeners maybe just elaborate on that analogy a little like, more kind of like a complicated uh model um in in terms of being a candidate first uh recruiting firm so most of the success we have with candidates is, you know, we start to build the relationships before they're even really looking for a job. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we have so much success is because we sit down, we get to know them, we get to know their background, what their ideal role would look like if they were going to enter the market and, you know, leave their current job. Um, and so by building that relationship, first and foremost, kind of having those intro meetings uh, and staying in touch, uh, you know, we're able to take our time uh, rather than if there's someone in the job market that just lost their job or they quit their job and they're, you're, you know, looking for a change immediately, mm -hmm. we're kind of pressed to back to into a corner uh, to mm -hmm. try to find a job that kind of fits what they're looking for, but it isn't, uh, you know, that perfect match. Uh, and so with the hitch analogy, it's just an easy way to kind of relay that to candidates first and foremost when we're reaching out. Um, so a lot of people, there's still some misconceptions about the, the recruiting industry. Um, you know, going back to the headhunter days or the temp days of the office. Uh, if you ever watched the office with Ryan, and Tef, uh, <laughs> yeah. there's always misconceptions about working with the recruiting agency. And so I think this is just one way on the candidate side to explain it pretty well. Like, you know, hitch when you, when you meet a, a matchmaker like that, you know, they get to know you, but they're not going to have the love of your life immediately, like in that first meeting or even the, the week after that, you know, they have to, to go out and you know, one, not only understand exactly what you're looking for, but two, then go out and, and find that match on the other end as well. Um, and so that's what we do with clients is, you know, we'll have opportunities we're working on right now, 
which we can present to you, but a lot of the times they're not going to be that, that perfect fit. Sometimes it will be, but um, you know, again, we like taking the approach of, you know, that long-term play, you know, cause that's where we really do provide value to our clients is, you know, the, the tenure of our placements um, is always a little bit longer um, just because we do take that time and we value that process. And, you know, on the client side of things, you know, people that understand that and value that, that longer term play um, are our best clients because, you know, they, they understand that, yeah, we might not be able to turn this around for you in, in two days. Like, um, you know, the, the pit farms of, uh, you know, national recruiting companies that have 50 people smiling and dialing all day long. And trust me, I was there. I know, I know all right. about that. But, yeah. Um, yeah. The clients that, that value the, the longer term search, you know, that, that one to two week, two to three week uh, search really do get the best placements and they, they don't have trouble with turnover as much because, you know, we value our candidates time and we value our clients time and we hope our clients value our time as well. And right. so when that all lines up, that's, that's the, the best relationships we have. Those are the best clients we have. Those are the best candidates we have too. Um, everyone that understands that process. Yeah. And you were perfectly segueing into, into the next question, which was some of the, the, the benefits of, you know, of your style of recruiting, of your, your business model. And you touched on one already being that timing factor as far as, you know, if someone gets fired, you're not forced in the corner and trying to find them a job, you know, in one or two weeks. Um, so besides that timing factor, you know, what are some of the other, uh, I guess, benefits of having this style of relationship for any candidates that are looking to, uh, you know, build a re relationship with a recruiter? So a lot of times when we build relationships early on uh, with candidates, you know, we'll be able to present them with opportunities, again, that they they you just have never heard of. Um, and so everyone knows the sprints, the Garmin's, the Cerner's, uh, you know, the HR blocks, all those, those big, you know, Kansas city, well-known companies, but there are a lot of opportunities out there. You wouldn't think to look for that. We'll, we'll, uh, you know, present to you. And a lot of times people, uh, you know, value that, that smaller environment, you know, where they can really see the impact of their work on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's, you know, that's one benefit is just, you know, opportunities that, that come about that you wouldn't really find on your own. Yeah. Um, but I also think it's, uh, you know, just having someone in your corner that can talk you through whether it's a rough time getting let go from a job or laid off and, and you know, you know, preaching positivity and getting you back on track or, um, you know, if it's someone where it's like that hitch relationship where we reach out to you beforehand, it's like, all right, you know, I'm not going to present you with just any opportunity. This is going to be the best of the best. Like, you know, I, I know you're happy where you're at now, but yeah. if this is your ideal role, if I come across it, let's talk about it. So, um, yeah, just having a relationship like that, having someone in your corner that you can, you can ask about, um, you know, your resume, get tips on that interview tips you know, whatever it is, there's just, it's just really beneficial to, to have someone in your corner that actually cares about your career right. and the progression of that and, and, you know, what you want to do moving forward. So, yeah. So someone who's listened to this, maybe on like the East or West coast who, um, you know, chief of staffs, uh, you're not, not on the, the national yeah. scale just yet. I'm sure it will be one day, uh, oh, no doubt. but, uh, for someone who's, you know, listening, not, not in the area who wants to establish this type of relationship with a recruiter, what is your advice then as far as doing so? Like, I mean, some, you know, candidates who are going to reach out to recruiters, recruiters in a turn might be like, what are you talking about? Like, that's not how it works. Like, yeah. So how would you encourage candidates to uh, develop these types of relationships with recruiters? Yeah. If you're uh, outside of Kansas city area, I would try to focus on finding a local firm. That's a, a bit smaller. Mm -hmm. um, one that has the time to really sit down with you and get to know you well. Yeah. Um, and, and you can kind of, feel that out on a, on a pre-screen is what we call them where we have phone calls before we bring candidates into the uh into the office to interview them you can kind of feel that out um you know are, are they pushing jobs on you or are they really asking you about your career mm -hmm. uh and, and that's how you kind of see through a transactional versus a relationship-based recruiter is you know if they're trying to push you into a couple of different jobs or trying to fit a square peg in a round hole um that's a red flag uh but if they if they just want to bring you in and get to know you better and build that face-to-face -face relationship that's what you really need to look for more than anything uh yeah. and a recruiter is someone who, who values your time yeah great advice thanks for that uh getting towards the end here uh, one, yeah. one of the key questions i wrap up with is what books people or resources have made impact on your on your life or your business yeah um so a couple of things one a book um 
I had a mentor give this to me and told me to read it when I first moved back here into town. And it's really changed just my mindset yeah. in terms of doing business. Uh, it's called The Go-Giver uh, by Bob Berg. It's a very common book. It's super short. It's like 150 pages. It's a really quick read. Um, but read. essentially, have you read it? I said it was the best kind of read, the short read. Uh, I, yeah. I haven't read this book. Exactly. Though. Um, so it's a really quick, quick read, but it has a great message. It's essentially the story of a, a guy, I think it's up in New York, uh, that's having trouble with business development. He reaches out to this really well-known author, um, and the author invites him to his house, becomes a, a mentee, and uh, tells him like certain steps to do something until he, you know, and then once he does, he'll accomplish his goal. But really, the the whole, um, I guess, purpose of the book is to kind of get across the point of servant leadership mm -hmm. and giving, giving, giving more than you ever take in return. Um, and, and that's kind of changed just my mindset, uh, especially early on when I moved back here is, you know, I just want to give back as much as possible uh, to the Kansas City community um, because I know that by using my talents to help others, uh, whether that's helping people in place and jobs or helping people kind of realize their full potential within the networking group and, you know, just building those relationships, making those connections, things like that, by by providing a platform to do that and by, you know, helping people, you know, make an impact in the job market, I just... I just want to help other people. You know, I know it'll come back to me eventually, hopefully, you know, if I do a good job and if I, if I'm in it for the right reasons, and that's just really had a huge impact on just the way I approach daily life. But a mentor gave that to me in, in terms of resources that have made an impact. I have a, a team of 10 mentors that I, I meet with every quarter. Um, some of them are personal and some of them are professional. Um, but they, they really challenge me and push me in the right directions. And um, they're just great sounding boards for any issues that I'm going uh, or encountering. And, you know, through my networking early on, when I was uh, had first moved back, I just identified some people that really did take an investment into, you know, who I am and, and what I'm trying to do in terms of making an impact. And they've been a great resource. Yeah. Um, Scott Havens is you know, someone I always talk about in terms of helping me with the networking group. Um, he and I talk on a weekly basis. Um, and, and he's just, uh, someone that connects people, uh, for a living essentially. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, he's just been a really pivotal role, uh, in my professional development. Uh, and with the loop Casey, he's just, uh, you know, been there every step of the way helping us out. Um, so he's, he's a, he's a great mentor, mentor. Um, you know, obviously I have a, a, a huge other team, Charlie Penner, um, Chris Underwood, uh, Ty Greenhall, um, you know, the list goes on and on, but I can't thank them enough for, um, you know, what they've done for my career at an early age. So thanks yeah. guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good shout out for sure. Yeah. And then to wrap up, uh, talk a little bit about chief of staff and how people can best get a hold of you if they are here in Kansas city and want to establish a re relationship with you. So we have a huge LinkedIn presence, um, for our small business. We, we do a great job of consistently putting out good content and just, um, trying to engage with as many people as possible. So follow us on LinkedIn or reach out directly through that um, or through our website. You can reach out to, to me at my email, which is ehotis at chiefofstaffkc.com. Um, and whether you're you know a candidate reaching out um, or a client that's looking for help with talent, just give me a call um, or shoot me an email. I've got more, more time than uh, <laughs> I ever have before. So yeah, uh, now's a great know. time to even if you're not looking right now and you just kind of want to learn a little bit more about the process or if you're a client that isn't hiring right now, obviously no one is at the moment, but I kind of want to talk a little bit more about what your plans are for the rest of the year. If you're watching this and you want, um, if you're in Kansas city at least, and you want, uh, um, I guess access to, to mentors or to connections, um, you know, reach out to me on LinkedIn, happy to help get you connected with any resources you need. Just, just let me know how I can help. Great. Emerson, thanks so much for your time, man. Really appreciate it. Eric, appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on. All right, take care. That wraps up today's episode. We hope to have brought you some valuable key takeaways. Most importantly, whatever you learned, take action on it. Apply it to your life. Apply it to your career. Motivation and inspiration only come as a result of taking that first step. So if you're enjoying the podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe on whichever platform you found the show. You can also follow us on all the major social media platforms, or contact us directly at genyleaders at gmail.com. That's G-E-N-W-H-Y leaders at gmail.com. Until next time, I'm Eric Huey, and thanks for listening to the Gen Y Leaders Podcast.